you might be under the impression that the title of this video was designed just to stir up controversy. That essentially I'm just picking a fight. But you'd be wrong. Religion can and does cause literal brain damage. And that damage can be difficult, if not impossible to repair, if not addressed early in life. I have a very specific and structured argument to make the case for this assertion. And there's scientific evidence to back this up. Now obviously, a lot of you are not going to like what I have to say. And I know a lot of you are going to find this offensive. But please understand that my intention is not to insult you. I'm not making this video for those who are past the point of no return. I'm making this video for those who are young enough to turn back. Think of it as a public service announcement. The most effective thought-stopping device ever invented, the most clever mind-control construct ever devised by religion, is the believe to attain salvation formula. Anyone who is raised in the evangelical church, as I happen to be, knows this formula by heart. You are born into sin from day one, and are automatically damned to eternal punishment. But there is one way out. First, you must believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and that he died on the cross to save you from your sins, and then you must accept him into your heart as your Lord and personal Savior. And then you'll be granted salvation and spend your eternity in heaven rather than hell. Children are taught this formula from birth, and the description of hell is given in great detail. I clearly remember as a child being told of the torments of the eternal fire, worms that would eat my flesh, demons who would torture me. It was terrifying. So terrifying that I felt I had no choice but to believe. And so I did. I remember making that choice. But most children don't, because they make it at such an early age. Later, as those children grow up, the blackmail becomes more subtle, more insidious. As they face the real world and doubts begin to arise, they're taught to cling to the church and fear anything that might shake their faith. Schools, social events, music, and even books are carefully chosen in order to limit exposure to ideas which would threaten that ever so important belief. Parents who do this to their children are not evil. They too are put through this conditioning. And as a result, they are terrified of having their children fall away from the belief. So strong is this association of believing in order to be saved that people in the church often refer to other Christians as believers. And it's a very apt term, because that's exactly what they've become. So how does this lead to brain damage? Literal brain damage. By imbuing a child from an early age with this horrific dichotomy of belief such and such or face eternal punishment, the church systematically uses the instinct of self-preservation to create a schism in the mind. Once a person comes to accept that a specific belief must be held in order to avoid eternal torture, they are no longer free to think independently. Their mind is held hostage by the threat of eternal punishment. Logic may point to a fact. But if that fact threatens the core belief system, then that logic threatens their eternal destination. In such a conflict, only the strongest are able to break free and choose the side of logic. Most, however, once fully conditioned, will fight logic to the bitter end, regardless of the facts, regardless of the evidence. Logic is merely the brain doing its job. And since any logic which threatens one's faith is fought as if it were a mortal attack, Religion does in fact condition people to shut down parts of their brain, and it does so quite successfully. The human mind is literally wired by our thought patterns, and as thought patterns become established, real and measurable physical changes occur. The idea that religion can cause real physical brain damage is not just my pet theory. There are in fact scientific studies which show a significant correlation between strong religious belief and atrophy of the hippocampus in the brain. And if it was just your individual brain that was at stake here, perhaps I would say it's none of my business. But this belief system is being imposed upon children, and that is simply inexcusable.